Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another Talk with the Hawk video here on the Hawking Regime channel. Today, a post-game analysis video of the Seattle Seahawks 17-16 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs in Game 1 of the 2016-2017 NFL preseason. Pretty much the way I like to do these post-game analysis videos, just go through the positives of the game. Again, this is all from the perspective of the Seattle Seahawks, by the way. The positives of the game, the negatives of the game, the MVP of the game, as well as some takeaways things that we can look forward to or obviously take away from this game going into week two against Minnesota for Seattle. So um, starting off with the positives of the game, you see Seattle, you see the first time that Trevon Boykin takes the field for the Seattle Seahawks, 16 of 26, 188 yards and one touchdown. Also sacked two times, which is pretty good considering the O-line struggles Seattle has had uh, a tendency of having in the past. So Trevon Boykin, seeing him play, I thought he played pretty well, honestly. Uh, especially his mobility impressed me quite a bit. Um, I definitely can see why the coaching staff of Seattle and the organization as a whole is high on Javon Boykin being a backup quarterback for Seattle and a quality one in that um, because he, you know, he played pretty well for Seattle. Didn't have an unbelievable day. You're playing against a tough Kansas City team. They're well schooled. They're well trained. Uh, defensively, they're solid. And you know, you know, he had some struggles, obviously, in getting points on the board. But uh, his last drive, the last drive of the game, was unbelievable. And if there's any positive of this game that we can take away, it's the fact that Seattle's uh, last two minute or last minute drill with no timeouts left, uh, pretty much driving 90 yards down the field, was quite impressive. And that also goes into our next point, our next player. Tanner McAvoy from the University of Wisconsin draft. I don't even know if this guy was drafted. I gotta be honest. I'm looking at uh, the Seahawks page right here. Rookie out of Wisconsin. I don't even know if this guy was drafted. I don't recall him being drafted. I'm thinking he's an, he's an undrafted type player. Um, but I mean, three catches for 77 yards, one touchdown, average 25.7 yards per catch. He pretty much mossed the cornerback he was on like twice because he's that he was that much bigger than that uh, whoever was defending him, and he ended up having the game-winning touchdown scored for Seattle, and then they ended up going for two with I believe Troy Main Pope, yeah, right there, and he ended up getting the two-point conversion. Seattle ended up winning the game, and it wasn't really a great game for Seattle, uh, quite frankly. They didn't play as well as I would, would have thought they would have, even though again it's the preseason, it's not a big deal. Um, didn't play excellent, but uh, that'll pretty much go into the negatives. The negatives of the game, pretty much, I thought, were the first drive, you know, that Seattle had. I believe it was the first drive with Russell Wilson, 3 of 6, 34 yards. And the interception is a negative in that area. Uh, it was unfortunate that we had to throw an interception. Wilson did force the pass, I believe. Um, it was open for a little bit. I thought that was a little bit of a negative. You never want to see your starting quarterback throw an interception. But um, honestly, I don't think it's going to affect Wilson whatsoever. I think he's just a, an unbelievable quarterback. And it happens to the best of them. Uh, so not a big deal. But I would consider that a negative. Defensively, the pass rush wasn't quite to the... Um, wasn't quite as great as I would have expected it to be. I would have thought we would have gotten a couple sacks. I don't think we recorded a sack today, which was unfortunate. Uh, also, only one interception, but neither team really excelled in, in terms of, you know, offense. You know, nobody scored. There was only two touchdowns in the game. So uh, defensively, I would have expected some more pass, you know, a defensive pass rush, but um, that does not appear to or That wasn't the case today. Um, and... I, I thought Frank Clark actually played pretty well. I saw him get off the line, but uh, defensively, I would say a big negative was the lack of sacks and, and turnovers that Seattle tends to try and uh, get on teams, even if it is just a preseason. But um, now going into the MVP of the game, honestly, it's interesting because there are some players you can get, and a lot of times that I've named, you know, a lot of the players that I name MVP of the game are pretty much people who essentially, you know, score touchdowns, and they didn't have a lot of touchdowns today, but I have to give it to Tanner McAvoy from the University of Wisconsin, 6'6", Seattle's not known, that's another thing, Seattle's not known for having any much height at receiver, so I'm not saying this guy's going to come in and even, you know, make the roster, who knows, but that height is pretty valuable for a team in Seattle that doesn't have a lot of height at the receiver position, and, you know, Jimmy Graham is their essentially their big boy that they can use to go up and get it. Um, but McAvoy proved to be that today with three big catch, two big catches at the last drive of the game. I don't think he had three. I think he had two, the touchdown and one long one um, in the beginning of the drive. 
And so I'd have to give the MVP of the game to Tanner McAvoy just because of that. You could pretty much, I mean, you could also give it to Trevon Boykin just because he got, uh, had a pretty good game as well. I mean, that's probably more logical, honestly. I just thought those catches by McAvoy were pretty impressive, how effortlessly he made it look, even though he only had three catches on the day and two at the end of the day. But uh, some takeaways from this game, I would like to see, oh, one big thing, actually, I forgot to really mention was the offensive line play. It's been a really widely discussed topic for the Seattle Seahawks. They bring in Jari Evans from New Orleans, um, who's a free agent, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, he didn't work at the starting unit. I thought Jermaine Effetti actually played pretty well. I thought the starting O-line as a whole, uh, with Britt, Glowinski, you know, Gilliam, even Sol was in the game because your Marcus Webb was out. I thought they all played pretty well, honestly. I mean, Wilson didn't get sacked, which was nice, to, which was really nice to see. You never want uh, your starting quarterback to get sacked, even though he only had six pass attempts. Never want to see him get sacked. I didn't see a whole bunch of pressure. I don't think he really had to scramble outside the pocket too frequently. Um, granted, he threw it pretty quickly most of the time, but I was pretty impressed with the offensive line play. Uh, you never want to see your quarterback get hit, so that pretty much leaves me with an impression of uh, content or being happy. So, um, offensive line pretty, played pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else got. I mean, Jari Evans, he got beat one time. I thought it was pretty noticeable, but as a whole, Offensive line, they played okay, but the second half, it was definitely worse in terms because they gave up two sacks with Javon Boykin, and the pressure started to get to them. Uh, but the last drive of the game, Boykin was able. Boykin was definitely able, if you watch that last drive, if, if you were watching the game long enough, because I'm sure a lot of people tuned out, I, I nearly stopped watching because we were down like like 16-6 to 6, um, in the fourth quarter. But, you know, Trevon Boykin, the last drive of the game, he was pretty instrumental, i got to be honest. So, you know, he, he kept calm, kept cool, calm, collected in the pocket, and made some good throws for Seattle. So, takeaways from that game, hopefully next season in Minnesota. I think, I don't know if we're at home. I'm assuming we're at home, but if we're not, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Hoping to see a better defensive pass rush as a whole and the, and the offensive line to continue to improve as we head towards the regular season. So that will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Talk with the Hawk videos. Next week we'll be playing against the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not certain if it's home or away yet, but um, obviously that is yet that will uh, we will find out pretty soon. But once again, that will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and yeah, thanks for watching.